The final Grand Tour of the season is here, and you know what? I fancy a bit of a challenge. Because the Vuelta is pretty star-studded this year. We have, of course, Primoz Roglic as one of the main contenders, no longer at Visma, of course, leading Red Bull Bora, going up against last year's champ, Sepp Kuss. Carlos Rodriguez is here. My favourite, I think, to win, Joao Almeida is here. Teo's here, Scalmosa, I mean, the list goes on with Lander, Mass. I know, of course, Richard Carapaz is here. It's a very good GC lineup, but we went for Primoz and Red Bull in our Tour de France playthrough, but we are going to challenge ourselves with Kern Farmer. Obviously, one of the invited teams to the race. Now, looking at our team, we're obviously the outsiders alongside Uskatel, Uskedi, but they do have Jon Aberastri with 74 sprint. That's Kara as well, a very good breakaway climber. This is our lineup, led by Pablo Castrillo. Very good rider. He did well at San Sebastian, I think, recently. Um, you can see all of our guys, pretty versatile riders, pretty good over medium mountains and mountains. Um, we have Soto, who's a pretty capable sprinter as well. But we clearly have no favourites for any of the stages at the race. So I want to win a stage with Kern Farmer at this year's Vuelta España. Just looking at the stages we have in today's episode, I mean, obviously mountains throughout the entire race. But we do have some flat stages throughout this first week. The race starts in Portugal, actually, in Lisbon with a 12k time trial. And we have a couple of big mountain days on stage four and stage six, more of a medium mountain day. That should be a very fun stage indeed. And doing that on stage one, I think is going to be pretty troublesome because the 12k time trial, this doesn't suit us. But let's see how the race begins. Soto, second off the start ramp for us here in Lisbon. It's a minus two day for him. 65 prologue, 64 time trial. If he has a good result, it'll be a miracle. And well, he's going to cross the line here. I think we've just cracked a little too early. Can we go first? Nope, slotting into second. And as we're progressing through this time trial, guys, I want you to let me know who is your rider to watch at this year's Vuelta a España. One of them for me, definitely Matthias Vacek, a very talented rider for Little Trek. Good all-rounder, as you can see by his attributes here. I'm keen to see what he can do. Nelson Oliveira currently leading this time trial. Defending champ Sepkus is next to cross the line for Visma Lisa by definitely the... the, the Definitely the leader this year without Vingard and Roglic in his team. And he goes fourth, actually. So our final rider on course today, Pablo Castrillo, is about to cross the line. Almost catching Vizcara up the road, actually. Decent time today. Decent race day. And we are going to cross the line. 50th position, exactly one minute down on Oliveira. Here we go, then. One of the stage favourites into the finishing area. It's Josh Tarling, who was so unlucky at the Olympics. But he does get the luck today. Only one second up on Oliveira, though. Wout is still to come. Okay, Joao Almeida, as I said, maybe my favourite to win this Vuelta a España outside the top 20. Disappointing for him. Can Primoz go any better? He goes sixth place, pretty good. But here comes Wout van Aert now to the line, storming to the finish. Can he dethrone Tarling? Yes, he can. Okay, Wout wins the first stage of the Vuelta. I wonder how many he's going to win at this year's race. I doubt that will be the last one. Our best finisher, 63rd place. Okay, our goal in the next stage is to finish in the top 62. And I'm hoping we can do that because a flat run to the line today, Wout is the big favourite again, I would suggest. But as you can see by the favourites, we don't have the strongest sprinter field, as you would imagine, at the Vuelta. So hopefully a decent result is on the card set. Okay, Iban Ruiz, try and get in the breakaway, my man. 117th in the GC right now. Doesn't really matter. Let's have some presence up the road on this first road stage. Glass is going on. It's time to get serious, guys. All right, Ruiz is going to have to settle for third place here. Unfortunate, but it's a single point. And by the way, Irabar on a plus three day definitely wouldn't normally be our leader, but 78 resistance. I think he's our man today. And looking at the finish today, we do have that uphill drag to the line. If we take a look here, it's not quite flat, and that's definitely important to note. So let's try and win this intermediate sprint for fun. We have Brasensky up the road, 68 sprint. Germani, 64 with a better acceleration. Ruiz, similar stats as well. I think Germani is the stronger overall rider, though, so I will take his wheel instead of Brasinski's. Let's stay here with 2k to go now. 
Final kilometer, Germani's still there. Let's go and try and get the jump on him and Brasensky, but Germani tries to respond. Here comes Brasensky, but we take the intermediate sprint. There we go. So unfortunately, Ruiz is caught, won't take any more mountain points he's done for the day. He can now sit up. I do want to maybe try and sneak these points here though, with maybe Berardi coming to the front now. Only 800 meters left. Not really a big fight for these points. And Berardi can take all six. There we go. Sorry, it was only three points, but does put us provisionally behind Germani on the same points. Anyway, our train is now assembled for Irabar at the front of the Vuelta Espana. We have Alps into Koenig, into Marche, who had such strong lead outs at the Tour de France. Wout van Aert latching on beside them for now. What a job Berardi is doing, keeping our guys at the very front of the race. Try to get to this little hill, my man. 7k to go. We lead the Vuelta Espana, or at least we lead the Peloton. All right, Berardi, what a job. You're now done for the day, my man. Gutierrez, go up to 95 we need to stay here where is Wout van Aert in that red jersey there he is latching on he doesn't have any teammates for now he is soloing it today okay but Gutierrez now up to 99 Miguel now up to 99 as well Irabar in a pretty good position let's try and go for the lead out Irabar following his man have we gone too early remember kicks up to the line 1k to go all our guys sprint Irabar has the jump on everyone can he win a stage at the world to Spania no he can't Oh my word, Unite Irabar comes second. Caden Groves is the heartbreaker. Oh my word, genuinely I thought we had done it there for a while, but Caden Groves with that 78 sprint versus Irabar 68. He did have the great day, but still, what a lead out that was by our guys. Unbelievable, it was Paul Miguel with the lead out. Beautiful job by him today, and we come agonizingly close, but still 19 stages left. By the way, I literally just noticed we have the rider in last place in the GC right now. Jorge Gutierrez, keep it up my man. So I know I mentioned Matthias Vacek earlier, but my other shout for a rider to watch at this race is Pavel Bittner. I definitely think he can win a sprint stage in the first week. Let's see if he can maybe do it here today. 8k to go then. We have our four-man sprint train lined up. Irabar going to be a lead-out man today despite another decent day. But I think Soto is the guy to go for with that slightly better sprint stat. Okay, and can the Kern Farmer boys dominate the sprint lead-out again? It's us versus Intermarche at the moment at the front. Gutierrez, you are done for, my man. Irabar, come on. Let's see if he's as good a lead-out man as he is a sprinter. 3k to go up to 99 is a slight drag to the finish here. And we We've lost Soto. We've lost Soto. So maybe Miguel or Miguel is going to be our leader here. 2k to go. Where is Soto? He is coming through. Here comes Soto into the final kilometer. Have we gone too early? I think we have today. We are going to somehow try to get a result here. Bittner goes for the line, but it is going to be all for Wout van Aert today, finishing ahead of Brian Kokar and Soto just about missing out on the top 10. Yeah, so I definitely jumped too early there with our lead up man, meaning Soto. So only 13th. He did lose the wheel. Not ideal. And Wout van Aert, two out of three so far at the Vuelta. And first place by 22 seconds. That could definitely change today, though, because the Pico Viercas, it's a massive... Look at the percentages here. Don't even want to know what they are. Roglic, the favourite, and the GT guys coming to the fore. So the way I like to play PCM is if you're on a good day, you definitely have a chance to go in the breakaway. If you're on a minus day, I don't really see the point in it. It doesn't seem realistic if you're on a bad day to try to go in in the breakaway. Anyway, Barade, our only rider on a plus race day today, which is pretty good because he's on three points already in the KOM jersey, but a very big fight for today's breakaway. Yep, a massive fight for the break. We have 16 riders currently up the road. That's not realistically going to last, I think. I mean, even getting in the breakaway with this team is a struggle, guys. It's unbelievable. This is going to be a big challenge for us. Afini trying to control things, but has he given up? Maybe not. And for us, being in the breakaway today is a must because we're never going to challenge the likes of Roglic and Kuss on those absurd percentages. So we need to try and make our name for ourselves, at least in the breakaway, um, even if it doesn't garner a stage result in the end. Saying that though, Barade about to be dropped along with a bunch of riders from the breakaway. Only the strongest are going to survive here. I mean, Jumbo Visma are not fun at all, not letting anyone in the breakaway. Miguel now for us is going to try and counter attack. Front of the race then, and Eddie Dunbar is going to be the first across this first KOM of the day and I think he will take the jersey today as well. Heist Lemreiser is here, Greyguard surviving, then we have Chris Hamilton and then a great ride 
by Mikel. He is going to make it to the front, I think. So I think finally the stage is under control by Roglic's team. And we do have four riders left at the front with Hamilton dropping away, Lemreiser dropping away, and Mikel is here. So hopefully we can compete for a bunch of mountain points at this first cat. Okay, 1.7k to go here. Dunbar is obviously the better climber, but we definitely have the kick over him. Can we maybe take all 10 points with Mikel? We are struggling for energy. 800 meters to go, 700. Here comes Dunbar. We don't have energy left to attack, but we can hold off the Irishman and take 10 points with Mikel. Love to see it. And that puts us provisionally second in the climber classification, only one point behind Eddie Dunbar. And I mean, we're obviously never going to win the stage from here. Two minutes 30 to the peloton. We may as well compete for these intermediate points. Lemreiser goes early though. Dunbar, Mikel, I think you should win this, my man. Can he come round? The Dutchman, I think... We just about took that? Yes, indeed we did. 20 points for Mikel and six bonus seconds as well. So right now, it looks like Dunbar and Lamerosa are pretty cooked. Not sure how they've run out of energy so swiftly here, but we may as well go solo. Why not? We have left them for dead and we go solo with 52k to go. Okay, Pal Macau has almost two minutes to his former breakaway companions at the Vuelta and over four further minutes to the Peloton. What a sight. And you know what? 17k to go. This gap keeps going out. It's seven and a half minutes back to the Peloton. What is going on here? Our Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe are maybe being a little bit overconfident. All right, here we go. We turn onto this road. Let's zoom in a little bit because 11% straight away. This is going to be crazy. Look how quickly the gap is coming down here. All right, the Peloton about to sweep up Lame Ricer and Dunbar, but Pal Macau still has something left. 16, 17% right now. Come on, my man. Here it is though, the favorites attack and look at that gap disintegrate. It's going to be heartbreak today. Carapaz, Giacone, Mass, and Roglic. Lawrence Plus here as well. It's one minute to Mikel. I am also going to try and survive with Castrio and Barade today. Pretty decent climbers. Let's see if they can hang around in GC. 3k to go. Pal Mikel is gone 18.5%. Here comes Carapaz. Here comes Roglic. Can we hang around? Come on, Mikel. Try to grab their wheel, but no. They go straight past the Spaniard, and it's going to be heartbreak. What a ride but it's no stage win. Sepp Kuss is a long way back, by the way, on this mountain as De Plus is dropped from the front. Roglic, Carapaz, Giacone and Mass looking the best today, but Roglic doesn't have it. Primoz drops away in the final 500 metres and it is going to be Enric Mass winning and potentially moving into red, but the time gaps are pretty spread out after that time trial. Sepp Kuss is now flying up the mountain and our guys are just absolutely nowhere. Enric Mass, what a day for the Spaniard winning a mountain top finish at his home Grand Tour. Roglic 48 seconds down. Doesn't matter too much though because of that opening TT, he still moves into the red jersey. You can see the rest of the results. A big group of riders coming in at 1.32. Sepp Kuss making a late move, so did Felix Gao. Our best finisher on the day, Pablo Castrillo, 27th place. Not too bad. It looks like Mikel Landa really suffered on that mountain with his whole team around him as well. Anyway, back to the sprinters. Can Welt make it number three or will the Starboy Irabar pull off another surprise? So looking at our race days, not good again. I do think Pal Mikel is going to be our man in the sprint today. And here's our man in the KOM for now as well. Only one point off Eddie Dunbar. Emric Mass as well on 10 points after winning yesterday's stage. But we are right there. No mountain points today, but maybe we can take that jersey finally tomorrow. 35k to go. Think it's time for a tea break. Oh, so good. 12k to go. Our train is set up. Mikel is definitely our man. 72 sprints, 75 acceleration as well. Let's try and dominate. We've been doing so well in the sprint lead out so far. But 8k to go. We're trying to stay here. Very flat finish today. And you can see the flat rating. 68, 69, 72. And Mikel has 70 base rating. So not the best for the type of finish we have. All right, 4.5k to go. Trying to find some space on the right-hand side. This gap is going to close. We need to try and get there before Alpsin. But we fail to do so. Let's try to come to the left-hand side. But this is getting very messy, isn't it? Soso and Miguel, absolute no sprint. Now, Soso, if you can, 2.3k to go. Mikel, try to follow that wheel. 1.7k to go. We've probably gone way too early here. 1k to go. 900 meters to the line. It's a messy, messy sprint from me today. I'm afraid we're not going to hold on. Not strong enough, but Corbin definitely is. He wins stage five at La Vuelta. Yeah, not the best result, but we do still snag a top 10 place with Mikel and we beat Wout Van Aert. It's not all bad.
But stage six, to Young Carer, is definitely the stage I've been most looking forward to today because it's a medium mountain day and who knows, anything can happen on a stage like this and it definitely looks like it might, just might, be a chance for the breakaway. So I know I said I don't like going in the breakaway on a minus day, but Mikel, he needs to try and get these points. He has 10 points in the KOM. Can we maybe take that jersey, Eddie Dunbar? He's joining the breakaway, it's gonna be difficult. And let's just try and stack the breakaway today with as many riders as we can. Okay, the breakaway has formed then. No worries about Astana rider having no wheels on his bike for now. It's Garofoli, the rider in question. Hoys, Dunbar and Lastra are here with Mikel. And we have Iban Ruiz on a great day, 76 medium stack, going to be very important here. And we are the only team in this breakaway with two riders. So let's try and use that to our advantage. Ruiz, you are going to try and lead out Miguel to these mountain points. He's probably the quickest rider in this breakaway and this slow pace on this first climb really suits him. Oh boy, here they go. They jump early. Eddie Dunbar has gone. Ruiz now up to 95 and it's too steep here for Miguel. I have to say, I think he's going to struggle even with the help of his teammate. Let's try and go for the line, boys. And you can see we're absolutely nowhere. Ruiz does come through third in the ends, Dunbar 13, Mikel picks up a single point, moving him to 11. It is so close now with Lastra on 10 points too. By the way, 85k to go. It is a seven and a half minute gap to the Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe control peloton. Could we maybe pull off a miracle here? Okay, shallower gradients this time on the next three climbs of the day. Definitely the next two. Let's try and put Ruiz to the front to help out Mikel. One K to go, Ruiz doing a massive job for his teammate here. Here comes Mikel going for the line, using that acceleration. Lastra goes for the points. Here comes Mikel and we're nowhere. We get zero points. Dunbar holds on and Lastra moves to second. That is a disaster. You have to say this minus day on Mikel is really costing us so far. 1.5k to go again. This is our final big chance of the day, I feel. We do have one more KOM, but we need the points here if we want to take this jersey with does go for the kick and now we go with Mikel giving everything to the finish line at the top of this climb. But Lastra is too strong today. He takes the points and he has gone from nothing to 16 and leading the KOM competition. I have to say, one of the things I love about controlling a lower ranked team like Kern Farmer is the fact that one KOM sprint can mean so much. Anyway, again, Ruiz is going to try and help out his boy at Pal Macau, but some very steep gradients coming up here. Flattening off just a little bit to the top though. There goes Ruiz Macau in a very good position. We're going to try and kick to the right hand side of Ruiz. And can we take all the points? Yes, we can. And that puts us one point off Lastra, one point off the KOM jersey, which is exactly how we started today's stage, I think. Oh my God. The Peloton have picked the pace up a little bit. They are three minutes now behind the breakaway, but much further back on the road, I can tell you that a certain Brit, Max Poole, has been caught out. He is well down and out of GC. Anyway, it's time to turn our attention to the front of the race because three minutes still, 12k to go. Mikel is now in teammate mode, working for Iban Ruiz at the front of the race. Could we maybe steal a march on the Peloton here and win the stage? It's not too steep a finish and Ruiz is on that great day. This is exciting, guys. Red Bull chasing very hard though. They have Danny Martinez, Roger, Adelia, Aliotti, Nico Denz. It's such a strong team with Vlasov as well as a domestique. Can we hold them off? It's going to be very difficult. And look at this, Danny Martinez closing the gap single-handedly. It's down to almost two minutes with 6k to go, but can we do it? Right, I do believe the breakaway are going to win today's stage, and we have a superb opportunity. Lastra, though, has looked so quick at those KOM sprint finishes. Ruith doesn't quite have the sprint on him. Mikel does, but I'm not sure he's going to survive to the line here. How do we play this? I think Pal Mikel is going to have to give himself up today. He doesn't quite have the yellow bar. I'm not certain he can make it to the line. And Iban Ruith is on a great day, so let's make it very difficult here in the final 2k. Dunbar on the wheel. Lastra further back for the moment. 1.5k to go. Here comes Pal Macau upping the tempo. Now Ruth can go alone. Macau, you are done for the day. What a ride. There goes Lastra. We need to try and grab the Spaniard's wheel. 500 meters left. Can we come round? Jonathan Lastra, Iban Ruiz going for the line. Garofoli is coming late, but Iban Ruiz wins a stage at the Vuelta a España. What a day.
Oh my god, I can't believe it. How have we won a stage at the Welter? I thought this stage had breakaway written all over it. And it did. We survive from the peloton. Roglic leading them in, stealing a march with Adam Yates as well. But Pau Mikel, the GOAT, the MVP today. And Ibon Ruiz, he's not an IBAN number. Ibon Ruiz wins the stage for Kern Farmer. A famous victory for the team for sure. And honestly, I thought Jonathan Lastra was going to win that. He looked so good all day, surely on a great race day condition. He does though move into the KOM jersey and Pau Mikel is still just off him in that competition. In the GC, Pau Mikel does move up to 15th place. So we do have a rider in the top 15. Ibon Ruiz as well is up there, but I think Pablo Castrillo at two minutes and nine is still our man if we have anyone staying up there in the GC, which is highly unlikely. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed our first episode of the Welta a España playthrough with Kern Farmer. Somehow we've completed our objective already. So let's see, how many stages can we win at this race? And what other challenges guys do you want me to try and do with this team at this race? Maybe a top 10 in GC could be a great challenge. Maybe a jersey, maybe a number of stage wins. Let me know in the comments below.